doing with myself? This shouldn't affect me so much that I go over my own two drink limit. <sighs> Why do I care this much about what that paladin Lucille said? Life of the party? <laughs> Why so brooding, Queenie? Hester, not now. You're drunk. <laughs> so are you. Come on, out with it. You know you can tell me anything. What? Did that bratty paladin get you down? Maybe... May she bite her tongue! But, ah! <laughs> oh, Hester, that never fails! Ow! <laughs> I aim to please. There is something else. It's about Jim. <sighs> you know, you're awfully attached to that old powerhouse. Why so much concern for a robust old salt like him? Alright, this is gonna sound a bit silly, but... I can't help but see my grandfather in him. Your grandfather? I'm sorry, I don't quite follow. He doesn't look like him or anything. It's just... Well, we used to visit Grandpa's seaside cottage when I was a little one. Father never seemed to get along with him, but Grandpa was always so kind to me. I remember I would sit in his lap and make up these silly stories about my life at home. And Grandpa would nod along like he believed everything I was saying. He certainly wasn't the most talkative person, but... He showed me how to do so many things that my parents didn't think I was ready for. Did you know, when I first met Jim, and we were going to have lunch, he walked right into a stream to catch fish with his bare hands? <laughs> Sounds like something he'd do. My grandpa taught me how to fish. He said to me, when you're old enough, lass, I'll show you how to do it with your bare hands. <laughs> but that never happened. Oh, you don't have to go on if... No, Hester. It'll do me some good to get it off my chest. You see... I was in my second year of Mage College, and one day, Mistress Cordelia took me aside. The school had received a letter from Mother. She said that... She said that Grandpa... He, he killed himself.
You... you never told me this before. I never could have imagined. I only wish I could have noticed sooner that something was bothering him. Come now, Amalia. You were a child. I'm sorry about what happened. It sounds like your granddad was a good man. He was the best, Hester. And you see a part of him in Jim? Yeah. Well, that's a good sign. Is it, though? Then, what about what we saw at that lab? Nobody reacts like that when they hear the name of the holy city, unless there's something seriously amiss. <sighs> you and I both know that paladins will say anything to promote themselves. But really, what do we know about him? What if... What if he's the mon... The... <laughs> I know. I could go talk to him if you like. Would that help? I... I suppose. Right. As for you, switch to water, will you, Amalia? All right, Hester. I'll be here when you come back. Are you smiley? It's just me. So, you're staying out of trouble? Right, sorry. That was ill-timed. You know, you're more than welcome to join us. I've got coin to spare, if you want ale. All right, fair enough. Mind if I sit with you for a bit? So, I'll not drag this out. You see, Queenie, um, Amalia, she's... A bit shaken from what she saw and heard at the manor, and... Hmm? Ah, oh, so perceptive. It's like I said the other day. Knowing who you're working with is key risk management. Which brings me to the question... Is there something either of us need to know about you? Hmm? Under your hood. All right. <sighs> oh. Pointed ears. You... You're one of the forest people, aren't you? Oh, this explains so much. The wandering, the quick reflexes, the resistance to... Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Getting ahead of myself there. Oh no, it's fine. Neither of us will think any less of you. I just wonder, when you shuddered at the mention of that name, was that... I know your people suffered a lot at the hands of man, especially our priests. 
I don't want to pry. It's all right, Jim. You don't need to talk about it if you'd rather not. I just wanted to clear the air. Thank you so much. I'm sure this will put Amalia's mind at ease. <sighs> well, I should be getting back now to make sure she's safe. Thanks again, and good night, Jim. Remember you? <laughs> You're that greybeard from the Oak Pass. Hmm. And no sign of that mage brat. What luck! She really did a number on my last batch of roughnecks. He don't look so tough. <laughs> Easy pickings! Let's just take his ears and be done with it. Simmer down, you lot. We should take our time with this one. Try to run, and I'll make it worse. We'll start with whatever's left of your teeth, pulling them out. And then we'll move on. How oh, exceedingly dull. Is this what passes for gangland torture these days? She might as well bore us to death. Oh, but that's not an option, is it? So, what now, little outcast? Are you going to let these fools waste their time trying to kill what cannot die? Or will you stop delaying the inevitable and accept your place? Of course, we can always do it for you. No one will miss a handful of worthless bottom feeders. Just to feel lucky we didn't spring this on you. When those two brats were around. You can recite that foolish incantation in your head, Holy Monk. You are already alone among man and fae alike. There can be no redemption for you. I am the broken shaman. And I am the mangled beast. We condemn the wretched beast. Are you ignoring me, old man? Uh. Ah! My hand. I... How? What's he doing? <laughs> That's not possible. I'll be running away now! You have their scent. Go forth, my 
monstrosity.